everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. So today I'm going to be doing my first video in what is probably going to be a series of videos about understanding the Cosmere. The Cosmere being Brandon Sanderson's adult fantasy universe. So this could kind of be a video to introduce beginners to the Cosmere, or maybe you've read some Cosmere books, but there are some things that you don't quite understand. I know when I first read the original Mistborn trilogy, I think it was four years ago, the things that I didn't understand really detracted from my enjoyment the most. And when I look back now, I realize it was entirely Cosmere stuff. Now everything that has been written in Brandon Sanderson's adult fantasy works has been part of the Cosmere so far. His YA and middle grade, so like Steelheart and Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians, those are not part of the Cosmere. And the Cosmere is a universe that contains multiple planet systems, and those planet systems have planets within them. And the books in the Cosmere, like Mistborn or Elantris, take place in different systems. And I'll talk a little bit about some of these systems, but the main thing I'm going over today is pretty much the creation myth origin story for the Cosmere. So today we're going to be talking about Adenalsium, the Shattering, and Shards. And this video is spoiler free by the way, I'm not going to spoil anything from the Cosmere universe or anything that happens in any of the books, which would be very easy to do with this topic actually. Though later on at some point if you want a specific spoilery video on something, just let me know. Also, I'm not doing any fancy graphics with fan art or anything like that, I'm just going to be like sitting here talking to you explaining what these concepts are. So the first thing is Adonalsium, which is kind of the power of creation, or God, in this universe. And Adonalsium itself we don't know a ton about because it was shattered at a specific point in Cosmere history by 16 people. We don't know exactly why they shattered Adonalsium, but we do know that they thought it was very important and for some reason they felt pressed that they needed to that they didn't have any other choice, and there were some sort of opposing forces going on at the time. And the people who shattered it became the original bearers of each shard. So a shard is an actual piece, a sixteenth of Adonalsium, and it has been taken up by a specific person, and that person becomes kind of like a god in whatever system they inhabit. Now the shards and the bearers went according to the powers that were inherent in them, as each shard has its own specific intent, which throughout the books we're constantly learning about what the intent is of each shard. And the shard ultimately ends up kind of influencing and shaping the bearer of that shard, so they could become very different upon taking up the shard themselves, or if someone else took over a shard after maybe an original bearer was killed. Also, I said the shards are in different systems. The shards can move around, the bearers in the shards, because the bearers kind of almost become the shards, unless they are destroyed. <laughs> so they don't have to stay in one specific system. There are several shards in the Cosmere at the moment that are moving to different places, or they may be in one system, but they're heading to another. It is important to understand that the shard's power impacts the magic of whatever world it is on. And I am going to get into that in a minute as I go over the known shards because we don't know what all the 16 shards are and where they're at. I did mention the original bearer of the shard could be killed and someone else could take up the shard or that shard could become splintered or slivered, which is another topic for a different video. Just know that the person who was originally bearing the shard can die. Being a shard bearer in this world and being kind of like a god does not mean that you are immortal. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go over the systems, what books they relate to, who the original bearers of that specific shard were, but I will not be saying whether or not the original bearer is still the person who has the shard. I won't be saying if any shards are kind of like dead or splintered or slivered, because that gets into spoilers for these books because that kind of topic, going beyond this original creation story, has wide-ranging implications for the Cosmere. Something else to note is that there are planets or systems in the Cosmere that do not have shards currently residing in them, and these worlds don't have magic. Or at least they don't have investiture that I can tell. The only example that I can think of is the Dramanad system, which is what Sixth of the Dusk takes place in. And Sixth of the Dusk takes place on First of the Sun, this little planet in this picture. And yes, this is from Arcanum Unbounded, which is Brandon Sanderson's collection of short stories all within the Cosmere. 
some of which we have never experienced in a novel form. So some of these take place in systems we've already been to, but some of them are in other systems, which was really cool. I highly recommend picking up Arcanum Unbounded if you have read the works that it has short stories for, because it includes descriptions of systems and postscripts and stuff like that that are very interesting and help you understand the Cosmere a little bit better. And they are written, written, in the book by the character Chrysala, who I really adore. <laughs> But now, on to the actual shards, their systems, and bearers. Original bearers. The first known shard that I want to mention is Ambition, which was originally born by a woman named Uli Da. And at the moment, Ambition is currently close to Threnody. Here's the Threnodite system. And the planet of Threnody is the setting for Shadows for Silence in the Forests of Hell, which I thought was an excellent short story. And I don't think that one spoils anything for the wider Cosmere. The second shard I want to mention is Autonomy, and the original bearer of Autonomy was a woman named Bavada. And Autonomy's current location is Taldane, which is the setting for White Sand, Brandon Sanderson's graphic novel series. I have not picked up the second volume yet, but it's the last thing that has been published in the Cosmere so far that I need to read. I'm also not going to get into in this video how exactly the shards impact the forms of magic on the world, but if you want a video on that, just comment down below and let me know. Next, I'm going to get into the Rosharan system, which is the setting for the Stormlight Archive, though the Stormlight Archive specifically takes place on the planet Roshar within the Rosharan system. And the Rosharan system currently has or had three different shards. The first one being Cultivation, which was originally born by an unknown woman, and we don't know very much about Cultivation in the Stormlight Archive at this moment. Then there was Honor, which was originally born by Tanavas, and those two shards were on Roshar, the planet specifically in the Rosharan system. But then there's the Shard of Odium, which was originally born by the man Rays, and Rays is currently on a planet named Braze in the Rosharan system. However, his impacts and his effects are still being felt on the planet of Roshar, and Odium appears to be on the move. The Stormlight Archive definitely seems to be the Cosmere work so far that has the most far-ranging Cosmere implications, probably because of the number of shards involved. Then we get to the system of Cell, which is the setting for Elantris. There are two shards present on Elantris. The first one was named Devotion, which was originally born by a woman named Aeona. Is it becoming a little more obvious how some of the magic forms could be influenced by the original bearers and by the shards themselves? Probably. <laughs> and then there was the second shard named Dominion, which was originally born by a man named Sky. On Nalthus, which is the setting for Warbreaker, the shard Endowment resides. And Endowment was originally born by a woman named Edgley. Then finally, on Scadriel, the setting for Mistborn, there were two shards present. Ruin, which was originally born by the man named A.T. Or Ati? A.T.? I think? I think it's A.T. And Preservation, which was originally born by a man named Laris. Now there are 16 shards, and you may have noticed that there were only 10 of those. We don't know the rest of the shards that are out there, and there are more worlds without shards that we're not really aware of at this time. I think that there is rumor that there's a survival related shard out there, but I don't know anything about that. And the other five, I've, I have no clue. This was just a quick breakdown of what ad nauseum was, because I know that's a term thrown around within the Cosmere that some people could be confused by. How it was the creation that was shattered by 16 people who took up a shard of ad nauseum, like a piece of its being that had a specific intent and they went on their way and kind of became like a god in whatever system they were residing in, influencing the people and the magics they're in. But anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Comment down below and let me know if you have heard anything about the remaining six shards that we don't really know of, or if you have any theories. I know that theories are rampant in the Cosmere universe. And also, if you have any suggestions for topics within the Cosmere, spoilery or non-spoilery, that you'd like to go over. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day, and until next time, bye.